The summer of 2003 is now far in the past, but still fresh in the memory of many. Thousands of people died following an unprecedented heat wave, probably the worst in the last five centuries that swept Europe, with temperatures reaching 48 degrees. In some places, many hospitals and other health services were caught unprepared, as such a catastrophe had never occurred before in those proportions. In general practice, uh, I think we've tended to be a bit just in time, as you might say. Um, what we're learning is that if you know that the climate is going to change, especially if it's going to change uh, and affect a particular part of our patient population, then we can plan ahead. And, uh, and that's prevention, and that's what we should all be if we possibly can be. The situation has changed ever since that unforgettable summer. Professor De Pledge has been involved in the Department of Health's response after 2003 and in efforts at a European level. The heat wave in, in 2003 was a really, uh, really a wake-up call for countries worldwide, um, and in particular in Europe and the extended parts of Europe into Central Asia. Uh, there, there was actually a project that the World Health Organization put together in response to the, the heat wave event where it was uh, designed to help different countries make heat wave plans to uh, be able to uh, inform their citizens about what action they, sh they should take in the event of a heat wave in order to reduce their risks. To put optimal services in place, many institutions including the Met Office, the Department of Health, Public Health England, London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine, as well as the European Centre for the Environment and Human Health, work together in partnership. On its side, the Met Office has developed health forecasting services in order to mitigate the impact of climate variability and change on people's health and healthcare services. Each one of the issues that arises, such as a heat wave or a flood, or the emergence of an infectious disease due to changes in climate, has health implications, has social implications, has implications for lifestyle, for economy. And so whenever we're developing policies to address these issues and to put in place either preventative measures or adaptive measures, everybody needs to be at the table. We need to have broad representation from policymakers in many different areas. Like Professor de Pledge, Dr Peter Stott of Met Office Hadley Centre, has been busy trying to find ways in which climate services could be supported in health-related policies. He stresses the importance of early warnings that should limit heat-related deaths in the summer. We wrote a paper that looked at the 2003 heat wave and was the first paper to make a direct link between an, an individual uh, extreme weather event and climate change. Uh, because what climate change was doing was increasing temperatures and increasing the risk of such a severe heat wave with, with all its... Uh, really severe consequence. <laughs> the information that can help people on a range of timescales in terms of, of warning and early warning of, of such types of extreme. And that means not just on the, the weather forecast timescale of what's going to happen in the next few days, but looking a season ahead, is there an enhanced risk of a particularly uh, warm season, for example, but also looking ahead over the next decades. And, and that is about how climate change is playing out and, and how that's increasing our uh, exposure to such extremes. All these efforts have resulted in concrete policies in the UK where the Department of Health has put in place a heatwave plan. According to the Health Department, the purpose of that plan is to reduce summer deaths and illness and to ensure that all concerned social and health services offer support to people. The most important thing is to have a sort of active surveillance system. So uh, what we do is um, make sure that those who are most vulnerable are being seen by someone. Now that might be a next door neighbour, that might be a voluntary worker, if it's someone say with Alzheimer's disease, it might be the district nurse that's seeing them regularly, or indeed on occasion the GP myself. Uh, the most important thing is to have that intelligent system, but also to have uh, the right conditions to maximally protect our patients. As scientists warn that the 2003 record temperatures might be normal summer temperatures by 2040, it is urgent to think seriously about the complex ways in which climate variability and change threaten or sustain human health. In terms of uh, moving forward in, in all societies around the world, the objective is to try and improve the health and well-being of populations, to reduce the likelihood of them becoming ill. 
And in order to do that, we want them to adopt more sustainable lifestyles. One of our challenges is to bring climate services to the right people at the right time across government departments. The good news is that coordinated efforts and effective policies informed by health climate research have proven an efficient way to prevent heat-related deaths.